Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 20th, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. We got the Hawaiian Islands, the bottom left. There's BC, Washington, and Oregon. Check out our next storm system out here. It is now pushing right towards Vancouver Island. Still some rainfall happening for Vancouver Island. Some pretty nasty flooding situations going on across there in some southwest BC. Just huge amounts of rainfall with a sharp precipitation gradient, largely missing places like the Seattle Metro, but bringing heavy precipitation to the Olympics and the Cascades. We've got some more wind coming with this frontal system, as you can imagine as well. And then we'll take a look off into the uh, extended in the fantasy forecast as we continue to look active on into the later portion of October. Taking a look here at the Doppler radar right now, and you can still see this uh, precipitation rolling into Vancouver Island is finally going to come to an end for today. As you can see, the frontal system at the very last bit of the loop here. Let me go ahead and scroll that out to where we are right now. You can see that frontal system and that fairly weak low pressure center here, but it is going to be close in proximity. So it is going to bring a decent pressure gradient. It's going to bring some blustery winds, especially Oregon coast, uh, Washington coast, and some of the central Puget Sound. It'll get a bit blustery today, maybe some gusts up towards 40 miles per hour. And there are some wind advisors out there right now as well. Some nice lenticular clouds going on this morning. I went out there and shot some of that uh, for the sunrise for Mount Rainier also. And uh, when I mentioned blue sky, it is an alternative to X or to Twitter here. I'm not leaving YouTube or anything like that. So go ahead and uh, download that off your Google App Store and, you know, punch in blue sky. And I am a Seattle weather guy. You can see it here if you need to pause this, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch, and you can see some of the sunrise photos. I was getting there well, there with my dog this morning. These are unedited cell phone images here. It was pretty spectacular out there. So anyway, taking a look at Seattle yesterday, 65 degrees, 59 is the average high for this time of year. We did get 1,300 of an inch of rain. A, a bit more coming today with this frontal system passage. I'll show you that here more in a moment. You can see we still have the hydraulic outlook for the Olympics and the Cascades as we still get some a moderate heavy rain at times today. And there is a coastal flood advisory, and if you want to check out that, I'm going to click on this right here and see what it says. You can see from 6 p.m. to this evening here, you can see a minor coastal flooding due to tidal overflows expected around high tide here. So, yeah, and check that out in the low line areas along the coastline. Keep that in the back of your mind. And if you guys want a nice, affordable home weather station, check it out. Everybody who's sporting one of these, you can click on any one of these individual locations here. It stores all this information for you in the cloud. You can graph all this stuff as well. You can see the solar radiation as the sun starts to rise this morning. Wind updating every few seconds. So yeah, highly recommend that one. Now taking a look at the last 48 hours, some just ridiculous precipitation total. Some places probably exceeding nine or 10 inches for British Columbia especially Vancouver Island. Look at this one right here. I don't know if that's an accurate total there, but over 14 inches. And some of the Olympic Mountains is getting hammered. And look all the way down across some of the Southern Olympic Mountains, the North Cascades. But look in comparison to some of the Seattle Metro. And the models did a really good job with this also versus Southwest BC. Some areas four, five, six inches or more. But there is some coming today as the frontal system will finally drape across the area, but nothing like what we've been seeing north across uh, British Columbia, for example. And if you want someone good to follow for British Columbia weather also on blue sky, um, you know, he allows me to show some of my some of his stuff here on uh, the Pacific Northwest Weather Watch uh, YouTube page, and you can see some places got almost a one month of rainfall in one day to, due to this atmospheric river event. So that's Ryan out there, and, and you can see he got some. Uh, some footage there of uh, looks like some uh, uh, creek out there or a, a swollen Lynn Creek there, uh, Vancouver, BC. So anyway, taking a look at what is coming today. I'll put this into motion. You can see our, uh, you know, minor windstorm here bringing the gusty winds to the coastal areas. Again, this is going to start late morning and on into this afternoon. You can see the northwest interior and the Washington coast getting the brunt of this, but it should be gusty at times down through the Seattle metro and probably down towards the northern Oregon coast as we go to today. And this frontal system is going to bring precipitation amounts with it. We're going to keep this trough going as we go through the day Monday. Showers will be continuing off and on here across the region. And then we get a little bit of a break here. But in the Gulf of Alaska troughing <clears throat> is going to remain active. We got a cutoff low here that we're still very uncertain how this is going to interact back with the westerlies and what kind of system will this bring into the west coast of North America. More on that here in a moment. 
Um, uh, but if we take a look here at the North American model, this is today. And you can see this is a sweet spot placement here for this low pressure center to bring wind activity here. And it's a good thing this low is on the weaker side because that's the perfect track. And you would pack a powerful gradient here if you had a deeper low. Um, but yeah, it's still going to bring some blustery conditions as we go through the day today. And then you can see that kick out across the Rocky Mountains in Alberta as we go through tomorrow. Now, taking a look at accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts. So here we go as we scroll through the late morning hours. It's about 10 a.m. There's 11, 12, 1, 2. You see the wind's kicking up, Bellingham. Look at that, 47. Seattle, as we go through the afternoon, looks like, what, 35 miles per hour. Look at the winds kick up across Mount Rainier. Anybody out there? across the higher terrain. Watch out. The winds are going to kick up across the Cascades today. And you can see kind of showing about a 38 mile per hour gust for Seattle, maybe 40 for Everett, some 40s, maybe up towards 50 for the northwest Washington coast. Windy for places like Astoria, down towards you know, Tillamook, you know, seaside out there as well. And then we scroll on in through tomorrow and still some blustery conditions as we go through tomorrow as well as that upper level low is still going to be swinging through here and bringing some showers. Now looking at the composite reflectivity, this is with Doppler radar may look like here over the next 60 hours. You see the precipitation just absolutely continuing here for British Columbia as we go through the morning hours. And finally, it is going to shut off pretty rapidly as we go through the afternoon hours as the frontal system finally passes through western Washington, some of western Oregon here. It hangs up a bit more here over western Oregon. Precipitation amounts have been increasing. Then you can kind of see this weak upper level low spinning as we go through tomorrow, continuing the shower activity as we go. Some chillier air aloft associated with that one as we scroll out towards about Tuesday morning shown there. So let's take a wider look at, at things. We're going to take a view off into the extended a little bit here. Here goes today's system swinging through. Upper level low hangs out. And then we cut off this low, at least for a bit. Gets picked up by the westerlies and tries to eject the system back towards the west coast of North America. There's still wind potential, but it's just fantasy at this point. We're just kind of watching these weather models flip and flop like a fish out of water, trying to pick up on what that system is going to do. But you can see... The models are in pretty good agreement that we're going to continue with the Gulf of Alaska active troughing as we go on in towards the end of the month also. Now, looking at the GFS, this is the ensemble mean. There goes today's system here. Then, you know, the models are in agreement with that cutoff low developing, trying to get picked up by the westerlies and swinging towards the west coast. But, you know, some of the models like the GFS have the system weakening dramatically here, but the Gulf of Alaska troughing continues. That would bring additional precipitation and some breezy chances here into the Pacific Northwest. So taking a look at the the European artificial intelligence as of last night. So there goes our system today. Get a little bit of a break here. Cutoff load develops, and this one tries to eject. And you know, since some of the models show this at times, that would bring a pretty dynamic pressure rise here across Pacific Northwest. Those are very windy conditions, so you can't just completely rule that out. It's just a fantasy. A forecast right now, but there is the potential for some wind as we go towards the end of next week. We're going to continue watching that because it's we're not completely out of the woods as far as that is concerned yet. But the ensemble members do, you know, a few of them show some windy conditions, but the vast majority do not. And taking a look at that here, this is Whidbey Island for today. You can see some gusts up into the 50s, maybe mid 40s there. And then you see that windstorm out towards the end of next week or fantasy windstorms. Fantasy means it is not expected to happen. It's just something that's showing up in the models as of right now. But you can see it has some bigger gusts kind of inter intermixed in there. So that's why we're just kind of keeping our eye on it for now. If we look at Hoquiam, you can see the frontal system today, probably some gusts up towards 40 miles per hour. And then you see kind of the sporadic scattered 50 mile per hour gusts, 40 plus mile per hour gusts as we go towards the end of next week. Here's Seattle, something similar, 40 today. Some of the ensembles have higher and this could cause some nuisance power outages with all the leaves on the trees out there. So you got to watch out for that today. You know, don't be walking around those parks that, you know, they don't keep up on their trees and there's big snags and branches and whatnot that can get blown off if you get a bluster like this during the month of October and some of that stuff can come falling down and then you can see the windstorm off in the future the fantasy windstorm I shouldn't even call it a windstorm because you can see some of the gusts up over 40 but right now not a lot of the ensemble members think it's going to be a strong storm on the European now looking at total precipitation in inches I want to point this out because you can kind of see what is falling there's a morning and right around the noon hour today still with that precipitation across BC and then the frontal system moves down a across the area and you can kind of see a little bit better uh, amounts here for the Oregon coast and for some of Western Oregon. Not much again for the Seattle Metro here. We're kind of dodging rain bullets left and right for the Seattle Metro. 
The Monday system swings through, bring some additional showers at that. And then we got this system off the coastline here. How will this interact with the westerlies picking it back up? And what kind of precipitation amounts will it bring? We're looking off towards Friday night here. So additional precipitation chances coming with that. And one more look at here, the atmospheric river. This is last night's European model run here. It's still continuing this morning. And then that will kick through with that frontal system there. So finally putting an end to that atmospheric river that just absolutely hammered British Columbia over the last few days. Is. Now, taking a look at wave action also, if you're going out uh, this morning, you can see the wave action a little bit of, uh, on the increase here as we go through the afternoon hours as that system pushes through. So heads up for that. You know, Don't turn your back on the ocean if you're going out there and watch out for your children and your pets. And then as we scroll up into next week, you can see that storm system out here, a fairly strong one, at least initially, and then it kicks some of these waves towards the west coast of North America. Gulf of Alaska is going to be churning as well. And maybe next weekend we'll have some nice wave watching out there for the Washington British Columbia, Oregon coastline. So yeah, it is that time of the year. We are in fall. Now, 500 millibar temperatures, about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. This is that boundary that's been spawning that atmospheric river. There goes our system today. And then we kind of keep the cool air aloft for tomorrow with the showers. And we drop that cutoff low. And you'll see it quickly tries to get reabsorbed and pushed towards the west coast here. But again, a lot of the weather models are having this just kind of become, uh, you know, it's just, it weakens rapidly as it approaches the West Coast of North America here. You can see not a great temperature gradient, but then this next polar lobe is swinging through the Gulf of Alaska. That has a chance to bring some additional frontal systems as we go towards the end of the month there. And we scroll far enough out, you can kind of see this upper level low hanging out on October 30th here. And who knows what's going to be coming by the time we get towards Halloween or whatnot. But yeah, you can see active weather looks like it will be continuing. And we already checked this out, the precipitable water anomaly. I do want to show this. In fact, let me back up there one more time because I want to show you something here. Let's scroll ahead. You can see the atmospheric river coming to an end. The cutoff low, you can see this does tap some subtropical moisture and brings it out in front of it here. So this is why we have to be careful. And this is just kind of why I want to keep this in the back of my mind because if this low were to develop more, a, a low pressure system that develops a, a little bit further into a deeper low will tend to move north quicker. So if the models are getting this wrong and this low is going to be stronger than what's forecast. This could easily creep up the coastline and bring a fairly decent gale to the Oregon, Washington coast, and maybe even some of the interior areas. So as you can see right now, it still <coughs> moves in as a, <coughs> excuse me, frog in my throat. Uh, you you can see it fairly moves in as a fairly harmless low pressure center there. It would bring a decent frontal system down across portions of California. But that's why I'm watching it here, because if that low, again, is stronger than modeled and moves up the coastline, that still could bring some windy conditions. So take a look at the 6 to 10 day. You're going to see the lower 48 above average, a little bit of below average here across Pacific Northwest. But the precipitation signal is pretty strong as we go through October 29th. 8 to 14 day here as well. You can see the below average signal across much of the region and, you know, precipitation above average signal as well. And channel's doing great. Um, I just want to give <clears throat> a thanks to all my members. Um, you know, without you guys, this channel is not possible. You guys have made this possible. And if you want to become a, a, a paying member, you can click on that join button down below. No pressure at all. But I, I do want to give thanks to, uh, to those paying members. And you can see the subscriber count is going quite well. Maybe if we get busy enough here uh, this fall and winter and on in through uh, the next spring, we will hit 100,000 here. Kind of interested to see what happens. I, I hear you get a plaque from YouTube here, which I could display behind me or something like that. That would be a point of pride. So anyway, yeah, uh, click like and subscribe. We will do this all again uh, tomorrow. And, uh, you know, uh, what else? Hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to you guys then.